Okay, so we're just going to have a look at creating um, another adaptive component here, and this time we're going to create a ceiling. Um, it'll be a custom style ceiling made up of some ceiling joists. So I've just switched to the ceiling level, and while I'm in that ceiling level, I'm going to start off by creating an in place mass, give it a name called ceiling. And being at that ceiling level, uh, I'm going to draw a couple of lines um, at that up at that ceiling level. Now, um, I think I can turn 3D snapping off because we have established the level that we're at. I'm just going to draw a line right across here, even that area of the ceiling that's um, that's chopped out due to the L shape. I'm going to include that in the model that I create. Um, and we just won't create the ceiling joist over that, but it's uh, probably easier for the massing if I, if I do just create a rectangular shape rather than an L shape. Okay, so I've got these two lines in place. Um, what we'll do now is we'll create a flat plane between those two lines. We'll just have a look at that in a 3D view. There's um, one of the lines there. Select that and select the other line and we'll go up and create a form out of those two lines. I've got a couple of different types of forms to create so I'm just going to click the flat plane. There's the flat planes. I'll click on that one and I've created that, uh, that surface. So um, we'll Select that whole surface, just tab over it until you select the whole form and we'll divide that surface up. And you can see here now it's divided into uh, 10 by 10. Um, we could uh, change that division but that'll be alright I think. So I've just gone finish mass there. Move it around and have a look at this so you can see how we've created that, um, that flat surface. Okay, what I might do here is uh, I might select all of the other items in here except for that flat surface we've created. I'll get into my uh, sunglasses here and I'll hide element. So everything else will be hidden except for um, the gridded surface that I've created. That'll just um, get things out of the road for me while I'm, um, while I'm working on, on this mass. So I think I'll select the mass now and, um, and with it selected Okay there we go, got the mass selected I'm just going to edit it now So I've gone back into the mass editor now, now I need a couple of other planes to work on here. So the point command is really good for creating some reference planes. If I create if I create a point along a line, it creates a reference plane for me, as you saw, um, that is orientated perpendicular to that line. Now I'll place it along the line and then move it to the end point. Um, and that way I've got a reference plane now at the end of that line. So I'll place another point up towards this other end and then move it into place. Click on the move command, select that point and move it back to the end of the line. Now I'll purposely not place the point right on the end of the line initially because I'm not too sure which orientation I would get. I could get that line or I could get that line orientation. So if I place it along the line that I want it orientated to and then move it back I'm pretty assured that I've got um, the two planes orientated in the direction that I wanted them. Okay, so if I select that point, I can see that that has set the work plane up for me, but just to be sure, I'm going to go up to the work plane set command and set my work plane up to that point. I'm going to draw a spline now, which will be drawn along that work plane now. So I'll just start from that end point, and then I'll go from one side of this rectangular shape, remembering that it indicates our ceiling 
I'm not going to make it too complex a curve with too many points in it. Um, I'm going to go now to set my work plane at the other point and I'll draw another spline. Okay, so here is another spline going in, different shape. And there it goes, I'll just hit escape to get out of that command there. Now, if I have a look at this right hand view here, click on the right hand view. There it is, coming up. Okay, so what I can do is I can manipulate these two curves now. I'm just um, selecting that one and nudging it down with my arrow keys. And then I can grab the controls and have a bit of a play around with these two curves. So I guess what I'm after with these two shapes is to have these two curves interact with each other. Um, so that I'll create like a waveform, um, a three-dimensional waveform across the, uh, the the length of the ceiling. So I'll just select the other one now and and play with that and try and get these two curves to sort of play with each other and, and um, interact with each other a little bit. Um, I'll just nudge that one down a bit also. So I've got these two curves looking something like that. Have a bit more of a, an edit with them till I get some shapes that I'm happy with. Alright, so that, that's going to look distinct, somewhat distinctly different on one side of the, um, the building. The ceiling's going to take on that curve, and on the other side of the building, it'll take on the shape of the other curve. So they are interacting a bit with each other. Just continue to adjust them down a little bit more. Just want to make sure that. Um, that they have good interaction and the end result is um, is going to show up as a distinct shape. So I'm sort of exaggerating the interaction that these two curves are playing with each other. Okay, I'll just have a look at the home 3D view of that there now and you can get a bit of an idea then of those two curved shapes. They're, they're doing different things on one end of the building than they are on the other end of the building. So if I select both curves now, and hit control key to control select, and then create a form between those two shapes, it's created, um, it's created the waveform across that ceiling for me. Okay, so if I tab over it, and I can find that whole surface, I can divide that surface up as well. I have a little bit of top-down view of these two surfaces now. You'll see how, if I just zoom in a bit, you'll see how um, they, they looking straight down in plan, they're not lining up with each other, or those divisions aren't lining up with each other. That's because the, the bottom surface not being flat is being divided um, in, in different projected dimensions. So that's probably not going to be any good for us. So what we'll do is we'll select, say, the curved surface to start with. Um, I'll just I'll show you how you can change the, um, the grid dimensions just by up there changing the, the U and the V numbers. And now we've got a, a more widely spaced grid. I'll just do the same 5x5 five five for the other one. So we're both of them dividing them both 5x5 five five at the moment. Have a little bit of top-down view of that, and you'll see how, once again, everything's still not lining up right because, because of the, um, the curved shape of the lower ones, the projected division dimensions aren't quite lining up. Let's just rotate that round to north. Get our orientation back again. Okay, so what we can do though is we can control where they are actually um, being divided. And to do that, I'll select the divided surface there. That's the bottom one that I'm selecting there at the moment. 
What I'm going to do here now um, is I'm actually going to put a reference plane in. And I'm going to start creating a series of reference planes across this area uh, to indicate where I do want the divisions of these two surfaces to go. And then I'll be able to control the division later. So just spend a bit of time setting up some reference planes. Um, I'll probably pause in a second and um, and have all my reference planes set up and then when we come back you can see the reference plane layout that I've created.